Who uses floats anymore? Well, maybe after seeing this video, you'll want to because you need them to pull off stuff like this. Hi there, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials with a big focus on CSS. Why the big focus on CSS? Because I think it is amazing and with new modern CSS features like Shape Outside, we can do some really awesome stuff. Let's dive in. All right, so here we are in VS Code and I have a, a basic setup here. We're gonna look at a couple of different pages while we work on this, but you can see I just have some text with a, a nice little image right there of some soup. And what I've done is this is in my article and then I have my soup image right here. So if I jump over to the style sheets that I have, um, I've done a little bit of styling, but the only thing that really matters right now is this soup image, which I have set a width on just to make it a little bit smaller than it was. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna come in and do a float not flat, float, of we wanna keep it on the left, so we'll do a float left, and then my text can start wrapping around it. Now, if this is a regular image, that's perfectly fine how it's working because it's this sort of squared off thing. But I have a circle image here. I don't want it to be stuck and limited in this scope like this. It creates this really awkward shape here. And Now, I could fix this up a little bit by coming in here and saying that this has a margin on the right side. I'll just say three rem just to make it big enough that we can see it, but. Oh my goodness, that's even worse. Like look at this one line all on its own. It looks super awkward now. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say shape outside, just like that. And you have lots of different options that you can do here, but for now we're gonna start with a circle. And a circle, uh, so we write circle like that, and then I can write 50% in right here and hit save. And look at that, my text is wrapping around it because we've made a circle. Now with shape outside, we do have option another option, which is our shape margin, but shape margin doesn't quite work the way I thought it would, or it does, but there's like a limitation to it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is a shape margin of one rem, and we're gonna see it doesn't actually make uh, necessarily the difference that we would think it would make. Um, so shape margin does actually give you a margin on the outside here. But what I'm gonna do before we dive in deeper is I'm gonna open my Firefox dev tools. And in the dev tools in Firefox, if I find my image, so let's just, click right there on my image to select it. Um, you will notice that if we look here where it says shape outside, they give us this. I'm gonna click on that guy right there. And you can see that it actually visualizes our circle and we can come in and we can actually play with this a little bit. Um, so you can see if it's smaller than my actual image that I had here, so I'm reducing the radius on that, I'm actually getting the margin there. So if I came and I turned off my margin, let's bring up my dev tool so we can do it live. We'll just move this over so we can see what we're doing. And so here, if I took off my shape margin, you can see it's now stuck to the edge of the shape here, just like that. So it's really glued to it. And when you turn on your shape margin, it's going to give you the space here. And if I make that uh, two rem, it's gonna give me a bigger space and so on. The problem is wh whatever your shape outside is or in your shape margin, they can't go outside the original image. So if I push it bigger than the original, you can see this is the dimensions. This is like the full original image. This doesn't work going outside of that. So shape outside, including shape margin and whatever else you wanna do, it only works within the constraints of the image itself. So to get around that, what we can do is we can come on this and I'm actually gonna remove the shape margin this time. Let's take that off, we'll refresh my page. We can still see it there. But what I can do is actually say margin, uh, not margin left, margin right. And let's do our two rem there just to give ourselves some space. And the Firefox dev tool sort of update here to try and visualize how that's working. So if we bring our dev tools back up and we just uh, turn off that visualization, now we can see what we're getting. Now in this case, I'm still getting that little awkward thing. So maybe we could drop that down to one RAM. And there we go. That looks a little bit better. And uh, now we don't only have the option of a circle. You can actually use your margin box, your content box, your padding box, your border box. All of those are actually valid properties here. I haven't found a really good use case for those yet, but they're, they are there. Uh, other things we can do too though are ellipse. So instead of a perfect circle, you can come in with an ellipse as well. Is that how you spell ellipse? Ellipse, I think is like that. Uh, with the ellipse, you do need to give it two values. I'm just gonna do 50%, 50%. I never know how to make these shapes. <laughs> I think this is a perfect circle. And what I'll do is we'll bring our dev tools back up. Um, so because this is an ellipse, I should have two points on here and you can see I can actually bring it up and down this way now and I can smoosh it this way and that way. And you can see I can go on top of my images 
And this can be interesting depending on the, if you have like a big image that has like a faded out background somewhere and you want to take advantage of this and be able to cover it, you could do some interesting things with that. So we can see here that it's the ellipse. I have my two points and then at center center. And you can do the same thing with a circle. You can actually move the center around. So you can have it at different places as well, depending on how you want to position things. So that's kind of cool, right? You can do that. But once again, we are limited to the original dimensions of the image. And that's a very important thing to always be remembering here. Um, but this this Firefox visualizer, honestly, it's it's incredible. It makes it just so much easier to use shape outside. So I'd really encourage that you do this in Firefox uh, if you're going to be diving in here and playing with this just because it makes it really easy to get exactly what you need. Uh, so we don't have to have any lips. You can also come in with a polygon. If you're used to clip paths, um, polygon, and let's just do 50% uh, or you know what I'm going to do is 0, 0, 100%, 100%. And we'll do a 50%, 50%, which should give us a triangle, I think. And, uh, oh, it didn't even give us a triangle. I'm missing another point. Okay, we'll do another one at 25%, uh, 25%. Uh, okay, 100%. Is that going to give us something usable? There we go. I sort of have something coming up. <laughs> and I'll do this one at like a zero. I don't know if, whoops, not, what if I did a zero here? Oh my goodness, it's getting kind of crazy. Uh, but because I am in Firefox, once again, the dev tools do come to my rescue a little bit because I can click on this and I can just come in and draw the shape that I want to have. So <laughs> I can go and fix the situation, but you can see I can come in with any shape that I want here and the text is going to wrap around that shape. So you can come in and get a little bit creative here and you can see the points are updating. So if you find a shape that you want, you can just come on and in Firefox, another nice thing is you can actually do a copy rule, copy declaration or a property name. So I want to just copy my declaration right there and then I could actually come in here and change that line, hit save, and now it's actually that in my code now. So there you go. Um, so if you are used to clip path, a lot of the things you are used to there, you can use here as well. Another thing that's really interesting with it though, and we're going to go to a second page for that, which is my plant one right here uh, and why I have a plant hero. So let's just go and update that plant where I have a plant like this. And if we go and look at my plant setup, I have a section of my plant hero, which has this green background. I have my image and then a container with my text in it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go onto my image itself. Before we dive any deeper into shape outside, I want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by Skillshare, which is an online learning community with classes on a wide range of topics, including front and back end development, UI and UX, freelancing, and a whole lot more. In this video, we're looking at shape outside, which can be a great way to get your sites to have a little something extra and improve the design a bit. And if you'd like more ideas and design advice for your projects, they have a fantastic class called Web Design Essentials, creating a marketing homepage that drives results by Dennis Field of InVision. What I love about it is it doesn't only talk about the design itself, but the thought process leading to it, including setting goals and telling a story before jumping into and creating a concept and design. And that's just one of thousands of awesome classes that you can take on Skillshare. If you sign up for an annual membership, it's less than $10 a month and you get unlimited access to all of their classes, plus the hands-on projects that come with them. If you would like to try them out, the first 1,000 people who use the link in the video description just down below will get a free trial to their premium membership. A huge thank you to Skillshare for their support of this channel. Now let's dive back into Shape Outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to select my dot plant image. And my image is very much set up to be on the right side. So I'm going to say that this should be a float right and hit save and it moves on over to the right. And you have my text there and then it's floating around my image. Uh, what, what we can do now is we could come in with a shape outside and you could do something like circle. Uh, I'll do circle 50% again, just, you know, or this one you could probably come in with an ellipse on it, to be honest, um, because it's sort of like an ovaly shape. But if you do have these interesting images that have sort of these weird shapes to them or something like this, where it's not just a perfect circle or ellipse or even like a polygon that you want to go around, there is another option. And that option is actually to come in here with a URL. Uh, so I'm going to write URL and in there you can choose the exact same image that you're actually using. <laughs> so in my image, I have my plant.webp, hit save. So let's come in here and just make that a little bit bigger. And you can see like it's filling into these empty spaces around my leaves. It's kind of interesting and kind of cool, right? Uh, now there is one issue with this, which is in your dev tools, you can't visualize what this, um, what the shape looks like when you do this, but you can choose any URL you want. 
And if it has transparency in it, so this, this does require an image to have transparency, but if it does, it's just gonna follow the alpha path type of thing of, is that the right term? Whatever it is. Um, but it's using like the alpha mask, I guess, of this area. Now you will notice there's a problem here though. It's working, <laughs> but obviously because it's floating and if you're not used to float-based layout, so you didn't start web development back in the days of floats, you might not know about clear fixes and all these nasty things like that that we've had. Um, but there is nowadays a modern way to fix this. Um, and if, so what happens, <laughs> what happens is when you float something, the parent doesn't actually see it anymore. So even though it's here, even though this content is paying attention to it, the, the parent is shrunk away um, and is fitting this content and it's ignoring the fact that the image is so big. So there is a solution to that. If you know the clear fix days, you know you can fix it with a clear fix, but I don't want a clear fix. Uh, we have a modern CSS solution to that now, which is a display of flow root. And just like magic, it fixes it. And now my parent is paying attention to the image and it's stopping all the way down there. And I get this cool little wrapping effect. And maybe we, in this case, could use a shape margin of, I don't know, one or two rem. And it would just help it so it's not actually gonna touch the leaves. It sort of gives this little buffer around the leaves. It should work at nice big screen sizes. And then as this comes in, you can see it's always tight, but it had never touched the image itself. It won't come in here because we have that little nice margin and buffer area built in. Uh, if you wanna know more about flow root, I do have a video that does cover that because it is a newer CSS property that a lot of people aren't aware of, mostly because they're not using floats too much, but there should be a card for that on the screen right now. Now there is a little bit more to this, so I will link to the MDM article on it as well in the description of this video, just because uh, I mentioned we can use the same things we use for clip paths here. So if you're used to using polygon, and all of that, but there actually is the path option, which is a newer thing, which is you can actually have like curved lines. Um, you're drawing like an SVG, but with curved lines and everything. So that opens up some interesting ideas. Just like floats are maybe underappreciated now, so are auto margins, and that's because they can do a lot more than just center things. Not sure what I mean by that? Then check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons for their generous support each and every month. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.